Hi folks, uh, my name is Ruby Singh. Welcome to my studio here on the unceded and unsurrendered lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. I'm an interdisciplinary artist. Uh, my family are migrants from Punjab and I'm a first generation Canadian. And uh, thanks for being here. I tend to find inspiration almost everywhere from the heliocentric whirling of our solar system to these animal bodies and how we sense the world through bioelectric understandings. And I draw a lot of inspiration from the natural or more than human world, like the dawn chorus birds that sing and greet the sun around the globe, the filtering of light through trees and the refraction in water, the smell of a freshly rained on forest and the sound of rivers, creeks, waterfalls in the ocean. And who doesn't draw inspiration from the moon in all its phases? When you catch a crescent moon in the middle of the day, or you can walk in a dark forest that's lit up silver by a full moon. I'm also inspired by spirit and mysticism, our studies of these ghosts inside us, and how humanity has sought to understand ourselves and that which we can't touch. Time as a whole is inspiring when it comes to rhythms, but I will also reach both into my family's history and lean into the futurism in sci-fi to understand my place in the world and the now. I don't necessarily prescribe to the colonial notions of bordering creativity. In my practice, I allow myself to follow my curiosities and those generally end up mixing mediums. My imagination tends to interconnect sound, visual, and poetry and spit them out simultaneously. Sometimes I'm falling deep into a poem and a melody emerges, and other times I'm working in sound and a visual representation emerges. I've been thinking recently that a lot of my work is about making the invisible visible, and that requires a multi-sensory approach. When Diana first approached me to be part of the exhibit, I was instantly drawn toward black. In recent years, I've been obsessed with the idea of void and how all potential lives there. The work of Dr. Karen Barad has been particularly inspiring while studying the void. And when we looked at the possibilities of where it could go and how we had access to that little outcropping, I instantly knew I wanted to paint it all black and create a sound sculpture that could live within the void. I wanted to have the listener be lost in the void, lost in the potential, lost in the possibilities with sound as a guide. I love this sound work being represented in an art gallery alongside visual art. I really enjoy the listening quality of an art gallery and the attention and focus that can be given to sound. I find galleries allow for a certain level of introspection and that's such a great practice to approach sound from. I hope to do more work in gallery settings moving forward. We are multi-sensory beings, so to be able to think and experience artfully through multiple senses, well, that just makes sense. I find our culture definitely favors visual mediums. To create multi-sensory spaces provides more root for inspiration, curiosity, and understanding of this human condition. Sound, in particular, has such clear emotive qualities and can make one feel immersed within, as opposed to observing from outside the work. As far as what I want visitors to take away from the piece, I really leave that uh, to the visitor's perception and don't necessarily want to prescribe the experience for anyone. There's a lot to take in, and I like to trust the audience to experience it with their own hearts and intelligence.